Get this. Weekday mornings from nine on Triple M. The man who pushes the buttons has moved into Ed's seat. Give yourself a round of applause, Richard Marsland. Thank you very much. I might even clap myself and boost the numbers time. That's beautiful. I know you're very nervous. I am extremely, because I'm also pushing the buttons as well as talking, and I'm keeping an eye on levels as well as the conversation. Of course, most radio announcers do that every day. Of course, but not me. <laughs> you did do your own night show. Weren't you recently sacked? It was a love, sex, and relationships kind of format, Tony. On and, another uh, network. Yeah, I didn't have the brand equity to carry it through for a late night show. <laughs> You'll be filling in for Ed for the next three weeks. Is that an exciting prospect? It is very exciting. It's, it's daunting, nerve-wracking. I believe the sandwich shop is already in receivership. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to eat one sandwich and two plates of Wheat Bix while the show's going to air. It's a breakfast of champions. He has three meals <laughs> during a one hour program. How is that possible? And just tell him what are some of the other jobs that you do? Because obviously, uh, pushing buttons on Get This isn't full time. I uh, do a little bit of writing here and there for uh, around the place, uh, Rove Live. Rove Live? Yeah. Is there much writing to do on Rove there's Live? There's quite a bit. I mean, it's it's a big show. It's about an hour and a half each week. And mm. so there's about five or six people in that room. Right. Um, some great writers. Have know. they done my sketch yet? Uh, I know, I love your idea. I have been saying for 10 years someone has got to get Peter Hellier to play Philip Seymour Hoffman. The closest they've come is they've done the uh, the Philip Seymour Hoffman Capote poster with Peter Hellier. Mm. See, I was saying 10 years ago, I once brought Peter Hellier out. I was comparing at the ESPY in the Gershwin Room. Oh, 10 years ago, and I brought him out as, ladies and gentlemen, Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> One person laughed. I didn't quite hit. Hellier just looked baffled. And every time I've seen people from Rove, I'm going, you've got to do it. And they go, oh, he's not well known enough. There's not enough recognition factor. Our was. audience doesn't know who Philip Seymour Hoffman is. Mm. And then I'm going, but now he's won the Best Actor Oscar. Right. Get Hellier into the full Capote gear mm. and just do a sketch of uh, Capote going to the small Victorian town of Moey <laughs> to do an In Cold Blood style movie about the Domasavage murder. Well, I'm not sure if the word Domasavage in a in a sketch on Rove would work. Right. I'm not sure if they'd really want it. If you said oh, Domasavage th- Garden, maybe. <laughs> there we go. They might. I, I think it's a fantastic idea. I don't know why they haven't done it. I know. And Philip Seymour Hoffman, he's been in every second movie of the 90s. Yeah. I mean, Scent of a Woman. <laughs> there we go. Twister, Boogie Nights. It's too, I'd be thrown out of the Rove writing room, wouldn't I? Go, go and do a My Charader. It's too fruity, that idea. <laughs> too fruity? <laughs> Is that what they say? I'm not sure. Uh, the antics of Big Brother, did you see it last night? I did. In fact, I caught an interesting bit. They've given one of the, the Big Brother housemates a camera. Just, oh, yeah. Just to record the moment for posterity. <laughs> did he know how to switch it on? <laughs> Any but idea at all? Just in case, you know, the antics aren't covered by the 93 <laughs> other cameras, let's throw another one in there. Exactly. <laughs> and who was voted out? Katie. Katie. Uh, now, because, of course, this was the big story last week uh, from steamy scenes with personal trainer Jamie and promotions model Katie to a love triangle and a stripper hooking up with a boob job model. The romances have certainly helped ratings, but the story is now that Katie and Jamie have been separated. Mm. You know, will the romance last? Yeah. Because, you know, such really strong bonds are formed in that house. Richard. They are, yeah. And, uh, you know, but they've been separated. And, and Jamie, in case people are wondering who Katie is, Katie is, of course, this one. What really annoys me is if Dad forgets the chicken on Fridays. Right. She's described <laughs> as a West Australian model. And um, what I'm leading up to is that, well, let's have another quote from Katie. Some people, by looking at me, just think I'm a skank. But I'm not, I'm a leader. <laughs> okay, keep that in mind. Now, I saw this in the paper last week, and I thought this was a joke. I'm sh- thinking, surely this can't really have happened. Mm. But Channel 10 has confirmed the network did not receive one complaint about last Monday night's show in which Katie, who we just heard from, let's hear her again. What I want to do before I die, have sex. <laughs> in which Katie and Jamie engaged in oral sex. Yeah. Not one complaint about that. Right. In the old days, there would have been heaps of complaints. Now we're just so used to that, that that's par for the course. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was kind of tame. Um, oh, really? I, I managed to catch just a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was flicking through accidentally. You uh, didn't tape it for the program? I saw Big Brother adults only. Well, it's all just music. All right. And uh, all right. sloping sounds. But uh, it's basically, <laughs> it was basically just a, a doona. And then a lot of sort of movement underneath it. And you sort of got the picture as to what was happening. Right. And they don't have a camera under the doona. No. And this is why they've given someone a camera. <laughs> Exactly. You just help us out, whop it under there if you could. <laughs> That's what they've done. Uh, let's leave that story. What about Shane Warne's Mrs. No longer Mrs. Warne. She's now being referred to as Simone Callahan. So disgusted by Shane's antics, she's gone back to her maiden name. She, finally. Mm. She's disgusted. <laughs> it's taken her a while. I don't know what it was that uh, tipped it, but she's now moving out of the mansion she built with Warne. 
That'd be a McMansion, wouldn't it? Yeah. I get the feeling that's a McMansion. <laughs> She's gone back to her maiden name. Do you think um, Do you think Shane's worried about that? There's only one thing that really worries me, and that's hair loss. Of course. <laughs> Fifi Box is joining us. Uh, she's been away to a health farm to put on a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she's 400 us. grams. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm looking through the women's mags. Uh, do you, obviously... You're looking at the women's mags more than me, Tone. That, I feel bad. Uh, so I mean, they much... are women's. They're for me. Well, what I a... mean, that's a terrible sexist generalisation, but... Well, it's all about who's fat and who's not fat and who's too fat and who's... And who's too thin. Too thin. And it's, it's such a, a razor's edge that they seem to walk. It is. I mean, just have a look at this. Just in one of the mags this week, mm. a new weekly, on the front, it's uh, Reese Witherspoon fighting cruel taunts. She's too fat. Oh, is she I, too fat? She's, she's meant to be an A-lister, but oh, she's too fat to be on the A-list. <laughs> then you turn over the page, there's uh, Jessica Simpson with a slight kind of bulge around the midriff. <gasps> Comfort eating? Oh, no. oh, what's that about? She's so fat. Oh, that's much too fat. And then you turn over the page... And it's Anna Cornucovia. Anorexia fears. <laughs> Anorexia fears. Well, why do you reckon that is? <laughs> that is appalling. Who's causing it? the anorexia? These oh, magazines, surely. They are. I have such issues with that. It is crazy because even the women, just looking at that photo of Je- Jessica Simpson with that mm. tiny bulge, I mean, that's an, a fifth of my bulge. Every <laughs> woman has a, you know, that's nothing. That's a flat stomach. Oh, Fifi Box, the slight bulge. <laughs> Is it a telltale <laughs> baby bump? <laughs> Tongues are wagging. Don't, I'll go back to Linseeds if you do that. That's what I was reading. It's Princess Mary. Is it a baby bump? <gasps> oh, it's <laughs> feeling clucky. Tongues are wagging. If your tongue is wagging about <laughs> Princess Mary, it should be pulled from your skull. That's my opinion. <laughs> What kind of person thinks <laughs> about what Princess Mary is doing? Is mm. interested in what Princess Mary is doing? I know it is. It's it's appalling. Uh, <laughs> it's disgraceful. But it keeps us going on it this does. program. <laughs> it's good clutter. <laughs> Solid gold clutter. We love a bit of clutter. <laughs> We always look through to find the fakest sounding uh, line from an insider, source, oh, observer, okay. friend, friend or, of a friend, or pal. Uh, and you know the the dialogue. They've just got to write better dialogue for this. <laughs> The, the battle between uh, Jennifer Aniston and uh, Eva Longoria. Oh, I didn't know there was a battle. Mm, there is now. She needs taking down a peg or two, spat Jen of the Latina bombshell. Ooh. Really? Would Jennifer Aniston speak in such no. bad dialogue? She, she would not spit. I met her two weeks ago and she's oh. not the spitting type. What did you learn? Is there a baby bump? <laughs> oh, a tongue's <laughs> wagging. I learned What's the it's... story with Brad and Angelina? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to ask those questions, but I learnt that she has an actual two centimetre waist. The tiny, she's like a Smurf, a midget. It's that she's the tiniest thing I've ever seen. All right. So is that too fat for the A-list or anorexia fears? Where does it fit in between those two poles? She, she's probably on the fence. <laughs> what about Saddam Hussein's uh, piss week hunger strike? It What's is, he done? It was, he uh, he announced he was going on a hunger strike. That was last Thursday at lunch. He refused lunch. But by dinner time, he'd relented. <laughs> so skipping a meal is a hunger strike now. That's brilliant. He, he needs to go on the linseed and apple diet. He certainly does. But that's just hilarious. Like this evil dictator says, I am not going to eat and I will kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go for your life. Make room for somebody else in that hole. Did you see John Howard yesterday? On the news when he bumped into uh, Udiano on the beach. I didn't. What do you mean bumped into? They were doing the power walking, you know, in the yeah. morning when he gets out in the tracky decks. And think... he, he didn't know that Udi was walking too? Or... Well, I, I think we, we'll let the news explain what happened. An early walk along the waterfront for John Howard on the Indonesian island of Batam. But the Prime Minister's routine took an unusual twist when somebody spotted a familiar figure walking along a nearby jetty. Oh, is that him? Is that the Indonesian bloke, Bam Bang? He's coming over. Oh, shall I hide? Um, I'll get up this street. Yeah, sure. Give us a lift. Quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr Howard, is that you? Uh, Bam Bang. I was just uh, climbing this tree to, to evade the paparazzi. Mr Howard, please. Oh, sorry. The shorts are a bit capacious. Giving you a, a basic instinct, was I? There followed a chance encounter of a couple of beachcombers in defiance of the security and formal protocol. Um, uh, uh, what about those socceroos? What? What are you talking about? Socceroos. 
Oh should I do the kiss kiss bam bang joke? What? That'd be tasteless. What, what Mr. Oh. Howard, what is this joke? Oh sorry, nothing. It was just uh, uh, Fred Bassett I was laughing at on the plane. My my wife cuts them out for me and uh, <laughs> President Udiano was staying in a neighbouring resort. This casual chat breaking the ice before formal talk. So, you just uh, out and about with your people? Um, <laughs> well, like getting out early, just uh, free balling amongst the constituents. What? What does he mean by I'm still Johnny from the block. What? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Bam Bam, Udiano. <laughs> mm. Udiano. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Howard. Uh, it's all fine. We're processing them offshore. I'm going to get the numbers. It'll be fine. We'll get it through. Despite the theory chat, issues of substance dominate and threaten to mar the formal talks between the two leaders. Mr. Mr. Howard will lodge in person his anger at the early release from prison of Abu Bakr Bashir. Um, so, uh, uh, who have you let out of prison this week? The Riddler? What? What does he mean? The scene set for both leaders to be less than fully satisfied. Oh. Here you are, you. God. I'll see you at the talks. Yeah. Mm. Is it, uh, is it BYA, do you know? Because I've, I've brought the bag. You'll be wearing your trademark fez, and I'll be wearing <laughs> my trademark <laughs> comb over. What is fez? What? Yeah, the, the fez, the Tommy Cooper hat. You know, the, the little. Just like that. <laughs> you know. Just like East Timor. <laughs> oh, sorry, that, that was inappropriate. Glenn Robbins is sitting in with us. Oh, here's fantastic news. Stock, Aitken, Waterman getting back together. Remember Stock, Aitken, they, Waterman? They're the producers that did all the Kylie stuff in back in the 80, yeah. 80s and 90s. That's right. Three yeah. of them, Stock, Aitken mm. and Waterman. They were responsible for some of the biggest hits of that decade, including mm. Kylie Minogue, Rick Astley, Jason Donovan, Banana Rama, Dead or Alive and Mel and Kim. Aussie's Stefan Dennis and the Blakeney Twins were some of its less successful artists. Uh, they were the producers behind 200 top 40 hits in Britain. Um, they, they, oh, they're starring in a reality TV show, of course they are, to chart the next Kylie, to find the next Kylie. What I always remember about Stock Ake and Waterman is uh, the trio once boasted how they wrote Got To Be Certain, which was a Kylie hit, mm. in 45 minutes in the limo on the way to the airport. Mm, yeah. That's what they said. <laughs> and it took three guys to do it. <laughs> it took three <laughs> guys. Right. Yeah. The chauffeur described it as the most harrowing journey of his life. <laughs> I, um, I spoke at Kylie Minogue's. 21st. Did as you? I, I did this as Uncle. This is true. <laughs> as Uncle Arthur. I did the speech at <laughs> Kylie Minogue's 21st. That's a news headline. I did. And and I I, I got up and I, I said it was my idea that she went into 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 music and then I used to sing her a song called, you know, Everyone's Doing a Loke and my, oh, as Uncle Arthur. Uh, <laughs> and, like, and I said, you should record that. And I still think you should, Kylie, go and record it. And then I gave her a card with $5 in it and said, you put that aside and <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. So, yeah, and then I went outside. It was in a pub in in uh, in Albert Park, and we were offered ten grand for a photograph of Kylie cutting the cake. Is there ten grand? So I picked up a nice little ten grand. It was great. <laughs> and then that went into a card. I remember going to see uh, you doing Uncle Arthur at La Joke in Melbourne. Yeah, I just, and I yeah. think everyone in the audience got a, a birthday card with an ironed one dollar <laughs> note paper clipped into it. I've still got that somewhere. That was fantastic. It's not a bad thing, is no. it? Well, they gave out at the Split Ends concert, apparently. I didn't go, but they gave out uh, spoons to everybody so you could join in with Beautiful. Donald Crombie. Beautiful, yeah. But a, uh, Good stuff. a birthday card with an ironed one It's got to be note. ironed. And you know what? I tried to iron one the other day. You see what happens when they iron? <laughs> the the iron? new ones? Yeah, they just all shrink up. They, new money cannot be ironed, and I think that's sad. <laughs> Are we used at home in the Uncle Arthur costume ironing plastic notes? <laughs> it was. We I learn was. something more about they you every like, time you yes. come in, Glenn Robbins. Yeah. Uh, what about this? Uh, West Australia has the world's biggest wine bottle. <laughs> Seen this monster, Glenn? Look at that. <laughs> 291 metres, the world's biggest wine bottle, holding the equivalent of 387 standard wine bottles, was unveiled at the WA uh, Wine and Food Festival. Uh, the bottle has been revealed to be the new home address of broadcaster Darren Hinch. <laughs> it's a studio apartment for him. World's biggest. Always straight into the news. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, straight in. That gets a red line. That gets priority. Anything with record break. And here's yeah. one like that. An Englishman who forgot a speeding fine for 52 years has paid up 
after finding the ticket in an old coat pocket. Uh, apparently he was captured speeding through an intersection by an artist at an easel. <laughs> oh, we're trying. We're punching. I see that this this new program, What's Good For You, has gone second in the ratings. Whoa! Now, what is that? That's with uh, Sigrid Thornton, is yeah, it? Yeah, and I, I know people are obviously interested in, I mean, there's a, you know, what, what are we, second obese country in the world, is that right? I think we are. We're the second fattest country, everybody. So, fattest loser on one network? Yes. What's not good for you on the channel? I want to see oh, a show right. called, I want to see a show called, What's Not Good For You? <laughs> with some fat bloke eating pizza, smoking a bong, going train surfing in the <laughs> afternoons, you know, going, that's not good for you, but hell, it's living. That is, see, this is like my idea. The biggest loser, they should start skinny and there should be a race to fatness and then take it all off. Oh, what a great idea. It should be a round journey. Yes. See, you don't just start with a fat person and get thin. You start with a thin person, get fat, then get thin again. I liked your joke, though. What was that? The big, biggest loser. And then it was the, the biggest user. Oh, that was for the, <laughs> Australia's fattest heroin addict. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're punching. Yeah. We're punching away. I've got one here. There's the, the TV guide for mm. the soccer. Yeah. And if you go to SBS, it's fantastic because it, there's cooking soccer shows. There's, oh, yeah, themed. There's, there's, I, look, I'll go, through the, I'll go through the guide backwards from 4.30 in the morning. It goes soccer, 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 song for soccer, FIFA <laughs> soccer, FIFA World Cup show, uh, another soccer, uh, and then it goes right back to 10.30 in the morning. Filipino news. I think. That, that, <laughs> but even they're doing just hitting a ball <laughs> during the weather. Oh. Is Inspector Rex playing soccer? <laughs> He'd be very good, I reckon. Is that the channel that's got. Oh, no, I think the ABC run Message Stick. Do you, that's oh, do they? The Aboriginal news program. Oh. I always figure they should uh, jazz that up with some fancy promos. Message Stick. <laughs> it's a message in the form of a stick. Uh, what have we got here? Listen to this. The oldest surviving condom in the world has gone on display in an Austrian museum. The condom dates back to 1640 and is completely intact. Do you know where they found it? No. Brian Harradine's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But no, they actually found it in a medieval drive-in. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah, next to an old a, a chariot that had a sign on it. If this chariot's rocking, don't bother knocking. Well, I understand. Well, it was actually behind the counter of one chemist shop for 350 years because everyone was too embarrassed to ask for it. <laughs> and then suddenly in the early 90s, it was purchased and no one batted an eyelid. <laughs> Remember that day when suddenly it wasn't embarrassing to ask for condoms? I know. Oh, it still is. It still is, yeah. Especially if you get... I mean, you never want to presume that people will recognise you. That's right. But, you know, that's going to be... You've got it because I always do the thing where you go, you've got the deodorant, you've got the uh, moisturiser, you've got the toothpaste, and you just... And if the girl's about, you know, 12 and she's serving, you know, mm -hmm. you just I get know. that... You get that hesitant moment where you go, you know, okay. I'll, I'll have some more toothpaste, please. <laughs> <laughs> that is. But if this... Uh, if you want to have a look at this condom... <laughs> it was. It wasn't called a condom. It was called Ye Olde Penal Hat, I think. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I still call them that. Uh, it's at some kind of exhibition at, uh, well, it's it's an exhibition of 250 antique objects related to sex, including Hugh Hefner. <laughs> Just standing in a glass case receiving favours on the hour and sipping a cool martini. But no, uh, but this is the part that when, whenever people are talking about old condoms, you always hear this. Uh, the antique, which is made of pig's intestine. Let her know you care with pig's intestine. <laughs> but don't, don't you think back? You want to, I want to know who was the first person to know, try exactly, that. Exactly. Who nutted that yeah. idea out? And he tied, he tied a knot in the end of it. <laughs> and he said, not only have I invented a condom, but a sausage as well. <laughs> it's a double winner today. It's a tasty snack yeah. as well as precautionary. Uh, why are you forcing that pig's intestine onto your penis? I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> There's a Korean missile about to be tested. Uh, have a listen to what it's called. The United States believes this is the launch pad for a Tapadong 2, a bigger missile with longer range, maybe enough to reach the west coast of the US. That's right. The missile is the... Tapadong 2. Which is also the same name as the world's oldest condom, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> what else is going on? Um... There's a new show coming out. Can I? Yes, can I bring please. This? Yes, there's a new show. The ABC is ABC is going into reality television. Have you read You're about right. this? What are they doing? It's a show uh, uh, called The Abbey. And is it a reality show? Yeah, they're getting five women to spend thirty-three days in a nunnery. 
and they're going to they're going to film it like a real well that's going to be a reality television which right. I think quite honestly would be interesting yeah yeah sure um, but they are apparently going to do the AB up late uh, and the, uh, <laughs> the AB uncut and uh, Sister O'Flannery to the confessional. <laughs> you spoke during silent prayer. That's a $5,000 fine. <laughs> will that be God? Yes, that'll be God. God yes. will be speaking to them. <laughs> to, to evict Sister O'Flannery, dial one nine hundred crucifixion Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to write jokes, but you know, I can't match it with you guys. No, look, you that's know. what we do. That's yeah. all we do. Yeah, but I think it'll be interesting. Yes. And maybe hot dogs could be the wild card intruder. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to have an intruder. Yeah. Uh, Satan. Perhaps. Uh, Paul McCartney, have you been following his misfortunes? Now, hang on. He had he separated from the wife. Yes. Yes. Turning 64. Turned 64, and then possibly the, the wife was involved in German, German pornography. We'll ask Ed about that when we get him on the line. But, you know, it was all predicted in one of his uh, performances only uh, seven or eight months ago. He predicted everything that was going to happen to him. <laughs> Nobody seems to have noticed. Have a listen to this. <laughs> Now, obviously, we couldn't get a recording of Paul McCartney for copyright reasons. We had to have a slightly off-tune impression of him. If you squinted your eyes, it sounded exactly like him. You squinted your ears. Yeah, Uh, yeah, but that's interesting because people have been waiting for him to turn 64. Because what is going to happen? Will he still be able to do that song? The question I want to know is, will he still be able to do it like 10 years in the future? (laughs) No. He'll have to do a retrospective version of it. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't that when you were doing German porn? Giving Adnan Khashoggi the horn. Going to orgies, sucking some. <laughs> who could ask for more? Did you abruptly divorce and bankrupt me when I was 64? <laughs> I was squinting. It almost sounded like him. <laughs> Angus Sampson is with us. Yes, I, I actually have four names. My name, <laughs> my full name's Angus Murray Lincoln Sampson. Is that right? Yes. Have you thought of being credited as that in movies? I have been. I was in a film, uh, an American film, uh, which was number one at the box office, I think, because it opened on uh, Super Bowl weekend. Uh, what was, was that called? It was called Darkness Falls. That was shot in Melbourne, was it not? It was, mm. and Sydney and Queensland, and it was a horror film about... The Tooth Fairy. You're right. Okay. And number one for one week, I'm guessing. <laughs> it was a weekend. Let I us believe. never forget that the island of Dr. Moreau with Marlon Brando and opened, Val it, it opened at number one. <laughs> it was number one for a week with Marlon Brando with an ice bucket on his head and a midget tipping ice into it. I never actually ever saw that film, but I... Uh, I <laughs> you just I fast know. forward to the Brando bits. Yeah, straight to Val. I was, a big, I was a big fan uh, of Willow. Um, I was shot in New Zealand. Was it really? Yes, it was. With Kevin Pollack? Uh, really? Is it Kevin Pollack? Yes. It Val, it's Val Kilmer, definitely. Yeah, and Kevin Pollack's one of the little guys. Oh, he's a tiny man. Yeah. Yes, against the blue screen. But Angus Murray, Lincoln Sampson, they credited it, and you would look at the credit sequence of the film. Oh, you film. put that in there? No, they, someone did it. I don't know how. They must have dealings with my agent, and uh, you're sort of looking at these tiny names, you know, Kevin Smith, uh, Chaney Clay, Tony Martin, Angus Murray, Lincoln <laughs> Sampson. As man too? <laughs> As, I was, uh, uh, my name was Ray, right. but uh, uh, they stuck a beard on me, and uh, I was meant to be a, a bar thug. Right. And they shot it from down below my knees. That's a, uh, a film technique that uh, you'd be aware with, Tony, to make someone look bigger is to shoot them yeah. from below or film them from below. And um, it, it was it's quite amazing. You, you, if you have a look, um, if you have a look at the sequence, there's my name's sort of like it's the reason it's widescreen. Uh, but <laughs> it's a good thing to do, though. Well, my, do you know that um, if you are a bovine savvy? Uh, you'll recognise that my first three names are breeds of cattle. Oh, really? What's the Murray Gray? Yes. Uh, the Angus Beef? 
Angus Aberdeen. Angus Aberdeen. And uh, the Lincoln Cross. Uh, the there so, is no prize, Richard, I should <laughs> yeah, let you know. Ed's not here. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the dodgy $2 prize. But Angus Murray Lincoln Sampson, aimless is the acronym. Oh, very good. And it's only a one letter away from the Australian Meat and Livestock Corporation. AMLC. You've put a lot of thought into this, I can well, tell. Well, I haven't. I was just... Th- I, I haven't, actually. I've sort of been... I asked my father why I was named after cows, and uh, <laughs> he, he he claims he didn't know it came to him uh, in yeah. a dream one night, <laughs> <laughs> maybe after visiting the black stump or something, you know. <laughs> Uh, we're looking for stories in the paper. Enough about uh, shonky blue screen work. Because Willow, is that's how they made people look small in there. And did you know the guy who invented the blue screen actually died about two weeks ago? Really? Was about 91. I, mean, I was just like to think that his funeral was somehow unconvincing and shimmering. <laughs> and as the coffin was lowering, people were going... It doesn't look very good, does it? Is there a, <laughs> it's a sort of a halo around it. <laughs> was was Blue Screen his surname? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Barry Blue Screen. Uh, what have we got in here? Entire family have their stomachs removed. This is in America. This is a family with a lot of hereditary stomach cancer. So they thought, we'll bugger it. We'll beat it to the punch. We'll just all have our stomachs removed, which you can do. I didn't realise you could do that. So what What do they do? do they... Just go straight from your esophagus, pretty much, to your ass. <laughs> And they're a lot thinner as a result mm. and uh, have to eat a lot more food, I, I'm assuming. Or less food, would it be, Richard? I think it would be. Can you survive like that? Isn't that what they used to do with animal experiments? I don't know. Well, what, 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 part, what, body, what body organ would you lose? What, uh, <laughs> hey, is it? One, triple, three, five, three. <laughs> we're going to have our stomachs removed. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get our stomachs removed. If the entire nation of America did have their stomachs removed, they, that would be the end of world starvation. Well, Tony, since I saw you last, I've been over in the States. And just seeing, they just throw food away. You but, just ask for a sandwich, they bring you 10 sandwiches. It is unbelievable, the, the, the waste there. However, you know, when you don't realise or, you know, when it's all, you suddenly, you're suddenly in Australia, then there, I'm just used to finishing my meals and sort of, you know, getting a, a garlic bread to start and a, yes. you know, a salad. The, the complete and utter so I, yeah, I cannot even describe how massive the servings are there. Suffice to say, I put on four kilos in a week. And the asses walking up the street. How big are the asses? I don't understand how fat, I'm sorry, gets on bums. Do you know how the bums become bigger at the back? And then I really don't like But you'll see someone who's just normal proportions, but with a huge ass. It's gorgeous. And uh, So Mix-a-Lot loved Normal it. proportions. Is that offensive, do you think? It is, get this, I should point out, not the 7.30 report. And, you know, you'll hear people in America just having conversations about food. You'll just be walking up and you just hear, I hear they got buffet. Uh, they got buffet. I've worked out the American capitalism, Tony, is... Uh, you have a pizza shop. I have a pizza shop. I, so uh, so I, I'm like, oh, well, everyone's going to Tony's Pizza Shop. What would your pizza shop be called? Tony's Pizza Shop. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, mine would be called Antonio's. And uh, sure Angus enough. Angus Murray Lincoln <laughs> Samson's Pizzas. <laughs> yeah, just, Exhausting for the person <laughs> yeah. answering the phone. Just having a, a sign dispute with the council. <laughs> It's extending into the next shop. Just quickly, uh, oh, look, if you're looking for inspirational movies, I was watching the Animal Planet channel last night. An ad came on. I couldn't get the VHS to happen quick enough, mm. but I got a bit of it. Uh, it's good to see the Bible is finally being uh, telemarketed. Uh, just have a listen to this. Call one 727 880 within the next 10 minutes to start your Bible collection with Jesus for only twenty four ninety five. Pay by credit card and you'll also receive a bonus DVD or double video, Moses Absolutely Free. <laughs> That's almost $70 value for only twenty four ninety five. Wow. Have oh. you heard the, the, the Old Testament described that way? <laughs> As $70 of value. But you know, for twenty four ninety five. I wonder if the uh, Moses one is a is a fold out. <laughs> yeah, you can part the DVD. I like <laughs> it's, it's a double disc. <laughs> mm, I like the sound of Jesus, but until they offered to throw Moses in as yeah. well, I wasn't really yeah. sold. And what's the acting like? Let's have a listen to some of the acting. Well. Lord God of Israel bids you let His people go. Also starring I'm your brother Paul Mercurio, the man. Dennis Hopper. In the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> and Liz Hurley. I loved him too well. <laughs> Dennis Hopper? Who in the Bible says that? I'm having visions of like a Sopranos season disc box set just with the disciples there. Who in the Bible?
Bible's going, and the Lord spaketh, I'm a man in the wrong place at the, the wrong, wrong time. At the wrong <laughs> time. <laughs> What's that from? And this dinner, it's not from me. I love how they got him to say man. <laughs> What, hey man, I'm telling you, man, that? the burning bush, man, <laughs> spurning me, man. What is going on there? Michael Ward, writer Michael Ward, has been keeping us company and uh, sold his house on the weekend. I did, Tone, and uh, I was pretty worried leading up to the sale because I don't know if you saw on the news, there was um, a story about thieves uh, now targeting houses uh, via the internet. They look at the real estate websites and they and they look at those virtual tours. Oh yeah, yeah. Where you can see, you know, you can see on the net the sort of the different rooms in a house and sort of see what it looks like and see if it's sort of the floor plan you like. Right. The thieves have a look at it and then they go and rob the house based on what they see. Based on the plans and, on the internet. Yeah, and then the rooms they see and they and they see all the furniture. So um that was a real worry for us. So in the lead up to the auction, I, I basically spray painted all our walls with "Please do not rob us" in huge letters, <laughs> in case they did that virtual tour, and it, it seemed to work out all right. But the sale price was down a bit. So I haven't seen this a virtual tour. So it's like a three dimensional. You can basically walk through the house, yeah, and look at all the furniture and look at yeah. where the alarms are, and yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right. And the, we we had just just you know I think it's some websites have it, some don't. We had one where it was just sort of pictures of the room sort of uh, fading, you know, right. dissolving into each different room. We, but we also had this little thing called a face-to-face -face where on, on our website where uh, the real estate agent talks to you uh, as soon as you click onto the site <laughs> and tells you about the house that you're looking at. And, and does he start lying instantly? Well, he, he, <laughs> he starts saying about our house. He said, uh, you know, it's beautiful to sit in the backyard on a summer's night, uh, lovely courtyard with uh, a magazine sipping a glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> Right, and we and we don't we drink red wine, but that, that's a that's a nice that's a nice little picture. And then I, the, the other day, I was I went to another uh, house on the same website, and the face to face comes up, and he, he's and you click it on, and he's he's going, and in the backyard on a beautiful summer's night, it's lovely to sit there with a magazine and a glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> He's using the same line on various houses. I like to think that he's checked that out, though, that he's gone to each of those properties with a mag and a shard. <laughs> just make sure he's not talking nonsense. Yes. Uh, I love that. When you, can you go through and look at what books people have got on their shelves? You know, there's nothing I like more yeah. than an article in a newspaper that's accompanied by a photo of someone in front of their own bookshelf with their books. Yeah, yeah. Do you do that? Do you have the magazine on its side trying to see what books people have got? What you need is one of those things like in Blade Runner where you can zoom in, click, click, oh, click, click, yes. click, click into the, uh, you know, zoom right up and see the... Uh, what yeah. yeah, but I, I love seeing what's oh, on people's shelves. Look at that. Stephen Hawking's got a copy of Black Dog with Patrick <laughs> Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> what about this business last week? Week where Australian soldiers uh, decided to machine gun the Iraqi trade minister. <laughs> well, sorry. By mistake. Yes, okay. It was an error of judgment. Uh, but I love how, I think it's, you know, the heat's off now. But for a while there, uh, the trade minister was so angry, he was going to um, call off all wheat deals with Australia. <laughs> but I think they're back on now, which is a pity because that, by calling them off, that would have saved us millions of dollars in bribe money. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody had stopped to consider that. <laughs> Any other international stories? There was obviously there's no jokes to be made about um, shootings in Thailand, and I'm not going to. But uh, I understand that the uh, the shooters were yelling out a Thai word, which I'm not going to say because it'll offend people. But it translates as penis. What I didn't know, Michael, is mm. that uh, penis is the most offensive word you can use in Thailand. It's the most severe form of abuse. Really? Yes, penis. So if you're at a Thai restaurant, don't complain about the penis. <laughs> You'll Which I did last night, actually. <laughs> You'll just be offending people. Yes. Okay, Rex Hunt, it's time to put it to bed. This will be, hopefully, the last ever sketch we do on the matter. I actually decided to get the final word on the ugly business involving Robin Hood and the back alleys by speaking to no one else but our federal treasurer, Peter Costello. Mr Costello, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Tony. Now, Rex Hunt has been described in the press as a philanderer, an exhibitionist. He's been called a hypocrite. Oh, certainly in a league with you, Tony, I'd say. Right. Uh, I could apply all of those to you as well. Well, according to the new idea, he likes to leap about nude in laneways. Uh, you've got to admire that in somebody, and, uh, and I do. Shouting obscenities and indulging in acts of self-gratification. I mean, you must have heard about this. Look, the fool, gruelling... 
ordeal has now been laid bare, including on your program. I mean, he sounds like an interesting bloke. I'll say that much. Well, he's uh, somebody who uh, who's taken his package out, mm. the huge package, right? Possibly the world's biggest package wow. ever, and. Uh, I pay tribute to him because of that. Yes, but wouldn't it be better for everyone if he just kept it in his pants? Well, I think, I think bringing it out in the open is, is an important point. You seem to be a supporter of jumping about nude and laneways. Well, I think that should be permissible. Yes, I do. You realise that the woman who participated in these antics with Rex has been... Yeah, scarred for life. Well, yes. Uh, she's obviously... Uh, uh, been uh, horrified by what she's uh, seen. She's mm. gone public. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of what's been going on has been known, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people have been too afraid to speak out about it in the past. Rex has, of course, made a full public uh, statement of regret. Well, I think it was well handled in a difficult situation. Look, it shouldn't have happened, Tony. No. None of us wished it, it had have happened. No, no. It's regrettable, it's mm. unforgivable, mm -hmm. but I think he did what he could in a very difficult situation. He's made some uh, very interesting comments. Look, uh, uh, people will interpret his comments in various ways. Uh, uh, I'm invincible. Well, I'm paying money. Uh, the girl's happy. She's got no money. Well, uh, Tony, I don't really feel it's up to me to interpret these words. Uh, look, I look at them, uh, I, I note them, other people will interpret them. It's a matter for for him, he's made his package uh, apparent. He has, Tony. but Mr Costello, look, the reason look, I'm Tony. asking you about Rex Hunt is because, um, yeah. well, as I understand it, you two are quite close friends. Uh, look, over the years I've had uh, a number of conversations with Rex, but uh, I, I, I won't go into what we've discussed over the years. Um, oh, there must have been pretty um, interesting stuff in there. Tony, nothing that... that you would find particularly exciting, I'm sure. Yeah, I hear that you yourself like to leap about in laneways in the nutty. Yeah, quite possibly. Yes, I do. You've not mentioned this before. Well, it's rude to talk about yourself in these conversations, Tony. The word is you like to go freeballing in the House of Representatives. Well, uh, you know, I'm just a happy chap. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I look happy. Right. Well, Mr Costello, thanks for your time today. It's a great pleasure to be with you, Tony. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Get this. Weekday mornings from nine on Triple M.